when we began, uh, the, the idea of moving up to a leader's summit for global issues, especially what we called at that time deadlocked issues, uh, was, uh, when we began it, an extremely visionary thing. We had no actual uh, response from governments that this would happen. Uh, the G8 uh, summit process was going full force. There was a great deal of reluctance to tamper with it. And uh, what we decided to do over the years was to examine specific subjects that could be eventually dealt with by leaders in a G20 or L20 type of format. Um, the financial and economic crisis that broke in 2007, end of 2007, beginning of 2008, uh, changed the whole picture. And all of a sudden there was a G20 at leaders level uh, and we're now preparing for the Toronto G20 summit of this year, 2010. The meeting that is taking place right now uh, here at CG, uh, which is entitled Issues for 2010 Summits, because there are two of them, there's one in Canada and one in Korea later on in the year, uh, is the first time, as far as I know, that a specific uh, effort has been made to discuss the major issues that are facing the two summits this year in the G20 process among a group of practitioners, academics, experts and try to input that into the decision-making process. Most of these issues get deadlocked at the official level. That is, people who spend their whole lives dealing with an issue and find it very difficult to change horses in midstream and think creatively and make different decisions. Leaders, on the other hand, are politicians. They are in office for a limited period of time. And they understand, I think, better than officials that sometimes you have to make trade-offs, you have to make decisions that then filter down into the bureaucracies. So it uh, seems to be extremely important the way it's worked so far since the first Washington summit was called by President Bush at the G20 level, uh, that the leaders have been able to uh, break through the forest uh, and, and look at the trees. And I think that that's been an extremely valuable uh, development. One of the great um, advantages of this is that if you can get the leaders to sit down all by themselves, without their Sherpas, ministers, the hangers-on and, and assorted others, uh, you often get results that you wouldn't dream of getting uh, in a more formal, structured setting. Um, I've had experience over the years with a great number of summits at which leaders actually uh, go into a retreat and they sit down and they understand each other and they work things out uh, and then they come out and they say, well, we've decided to do this or that. I think it's very important. I mean, you know, any restricted group of states at a leader's level will always uh, arouse suspicions uh, among those who aren't included. And I think it's extremely important that the G20 understand the importance of outreach, whether it's outreach to the non-participants, outreach to regions, or outreach to organizations that have dealt with and, and unsuccessfully tackled some of these issues in the past. I think the Koreans have seen that very clearly and um, you have to remember that the Canada summit, the G20 Canada meeting, Toronto meeting, is not the formal yearly G20 summit. It was a sort of an add-on that Canada wanted to do because it was hosting the G8 this year. I think this will be the last time that there will be two summits of the G20 in one calendar year. But um, I think as we move forward, it's extremely important and incumbent on the members of the G20, those who are sitting at the table, 
to engage in outreach with those who aren't and also with the international organizations that have these issues on their agenda whether it's the UN or the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund or the Bank for International Settlements or any of the regional organizations like the African Union or, or um, the Latin American group of states or uh, ASEAN uh, so you know as, as I think it's developing uh, the suggestion is going to be that each host state takes on the responsibility of the basic outreach but uh, the individual members of the G20 uh, are responsible for uh, outreach to their own regions and to the countries that they are closest to.